Hello, artists. Um, we will be talking about Plaster of Paris today. Um, so let's get started. Um, this is going to be about a 10 minute lesson. I'm going to share my screen. Here we go. Um, you should be able to see that. Um, sorry. <laughs> um, cannot. There we are. Okay, um, so Plaster of Paris um, uses history and how to mix it, right? That's important. Um, so um, here is the chemical formula of Plaster of Paris. Um, that's not going to be on the little mini test I have at the end, but um, if you are interested or if you're a chemist, uh, maybe this is, this is fun to look at. Anyway, so Plaster of Paris. Um, it's a white or yellowish powder. I don't know if you can see it. I have a little bucket here. Um, you will get one of those buckets. It's a white or yellowish powder, finely divided, odorless, and mostly or entirely of calcium sulfide uh, hemahydrate. Um, it forms a paste when it's mixed with water um, and it hardens into a solid within 15 minutes. Um, it's a chemical reaction. Um, so the plaster of Paris will get warm. And when you notice that, that's a good sign, okay? <laughs> It's used in making casts, molds, and sculpture. And it used to be used to, um, you know, if you had a broken bone, they used to um, wrap it in plaster bandages, um, you know, to support it. But uh, I think we're using different things now. It's generally non-toxic. However, you do not want to breathe it in. It's very important that you don't. Um, it's a fine powder. It's irritating. Um, and if you already have like breathing difficulties, asthma, things like that, um, you know, make sure you wear a mask, um, right? Cool. Um, why is it called Plaster of Paris? Is it made in Paris? Um, are we getting it from Paris? That would be cool, right? Um, no, but um, that's how it used to be. Um, so when, like, you know, during the during ancient times, um, I think they found Par Plaster of Paris in around 1100 underneath Paris in France. Um, and they started mining it and shipping it to all over Europe. Um, artists were using it. Um, it was used for house building, all kinds of things, right? Um, to the left, you see like um, one of those abandoned mining shafts underneath Paris. Um, you can actually go there as a tourist. Um, and, and uh, you know, they're like large networks of tunnels, um, all abandoned now, but um, I think there are tours. And so you can go in one of those tours. On the right, you see um, the river Seine in the background there a little bit. And in the front, like, you know, the raw, just mined gypsum which was then turned into, it's, a, it's an ancient photograph, I suppose, <laughs> like probably a hundred years old looks it, right? Um, so that was, that's basically what it looks like before they turn it into things in that little bucket. All right, um, here's a map. <clears throat> I think it's interesting. So like you see like the green areas are the areas where they actually mined. It's an underground map where they actually mined the plaster of Paris. Um, they are like, again, as I said, they're like three large networks. Um, I don't know if they're combined or not, but um, they're really underneath several of, the, of those uh, Parisian arrondissements or districts. Um, if you're interested in that, there's a lot more information about it online and it's kind of fascinating um, when you consider it, it's like right under this beautiful city, right? People used to hide there, um, you know, during wars, uh, as late as the Second World War, people were hiding underneath there. Um, yeah, um, interesting, fascinating history. So plaster of Paris is an art material. We've been using it for like really like literally millennia um, in different ways um, for casting models. Uh, it, holds, it holds shapes really well. And when sometimes when you go into old buildings, you'll see that there are ornaments like you know, on the ceilings and, and in the corners, that is actually made out of plaster of Paris. Um, it carves really well. It's, it's like a really easy to work with art material. Um, that's why it's so widely used. Um, in medieval and Renaissance times, um, they used it um, as gesso. Um, gesso is made out of other things these days, but there used to be plaster of Paris and gesso, um, which they used as a background for, you know, wood panels, stone or canvas. So that they could paint uh, tempera paintings or old paintings on it. Uh, it's very absorbent and very stable. Okay, so lots of uses, lots of uses for plaster of Paris. So now, how do we mix plaster of Paris? Right, first off, never pour it down your drain. 
Um, if you have any remaining plaster of Paris on your hands or in your buckets, you put them in the trash can. Do not put them down the drain. It will not maybe, but 100% clog your drain. And we don't want that, okay? So please be careful. Don't put plaster down your drain. And stress that enough. All right. So here you go. Um, two parts plaster. You cover your area, um, right? Want to cover the area, make sure, because it, it's pretty messy. Then you have a large bucket. Um, you add the water first, okay? One part water, two parts plaster. Room temperature water, okay? You mix the plaster a little bit, um, if any lumps in it, things like that. You want to get them out. Um, and then you start slowly adding plaster to the water. Always that way. Water first, and then you add the plaster to the water. Never the other way around. It's not going to work. Okay? Slowly adding it, just like you don't stir it. You just sort of like let it sink. Um, then you start like tapping your little bucket a little bit so that all of the air bubbles leave. And you keep adding. Um, you keep adding plaster of Paris until... You, you know, like until the plaster doesn't sink down anymore, you know, and you, it's called the island method. I mean, most of my colleagues call it the island method because you will see little islands built, okay? That's when you know you're good. Um, so then you don't add any more plaster and then you slowly stir the plaster. Um, don't overmix it, right? It just needs to be like until all the lumps are gone. Um, if you overmix it, it will no longer set. So... And at this point, you know, if it has sort of like the consistency of mm, yogurt, um, maybe thin yogurt, like kefir, um, then you're good, right? So you stir it a little bit, make sure all the, you know, if, there, if there's any powder left, make sure that it's all absorbed. And at that point, you have about 15 minutes before it starts to harden, right? And what we're doing in these 15 minutes, um, I will show you in the next two videos, but um, I wanted to just give you like a short overlook at you know what is it and how do we mix it right um, it is a chemical reaction so as the plaster hardens um, the plaster will get warm as i said earlier um, it's that's a good thing right so you want it to get warm then you know that you did it right and so some things to remember you know as i said um, one part water two parts plaster the water should be room temperature. Don't make it hot because it will just speed up the process and then you have less time. Do not overmix it. As I said, if you overmix it, you will likely um, create um, like plaster that doesn't work anymore, okay? Um, and once again, please never ever pour your plaster down your drain, okay? That's super important. Um, goes for your hands too. Don't wash, just wash your leg. If you have lots of plaster on your hands, don't just go to the sink and wash them because Where's the plaster gonna go? It's gonna go down your sink, all right? Don't do that. Um, so what you do is like you, you use some newspaper, you go over your garbage can and you clean your hands off as good as you can. And then, you know, when there's almost no more plaster on your hands, then you wash your hands in the sink. Same with the plaster, just pour it down your um, garbage can, maybe uh, even in a, in a little, you know, plastic liner um, to make less of a mess, all right? Um, what else? I think that is all we um, we have to discuss today. Um, feel free to look at this um, video again and again. Um, you know, if you don't have, you know, if you have questions. Um, in part two, we'll learn how to make molds. In part three, we'll learn how to make a plaster cast. So stay tuned. Remember to do um, the quiz. Um, it's going to be a Google form quiz that I will attach to this. Um, please you know, it gives me a chance to, to know if you understood what I was talking about here. And if you have any questions, as always, reach out to me. Um, you have my email, but I put it here again. Okay. Um, all right. That's, I believe, let me stop my share. That's all I have for you today. Um, have a great day, and I'll see you next time. Bye.